Let's Talk with Dr. Cindy. I'm here today to talk with one of my guest bloggers, Dr. Toyin Falusi, and I am so excited, guys, and I think you're going to be just as excited as I am. Um, Dr. Falusi is an amazing physician, infectious disease specialist, author, mom, new wife, and a blogger specifically blogging about so many issues. But today she's here to talk about her guest blog on the Dr. Cindy Duke website, which is all about menopause. And I encourage you guys, if you haven't read the blog yet to check it out, we'll be sharing the link during today's program. But really, you know, what you'll get out of today's talk is you'll get to know more about Dr. Toyin, how you can follow her yourself. You'll hear about her blog and why she wrote the blog about menopause and the seven habits to get through it. But you'd also hear other pearls from her as it relates to, you know, for us Gen X, where more and more of us are entering menopause. I know, kind of hard to admit, right? But for Generation X, we're either in perimenopause or menopause at this point. And it's important for us to take ownership of that and talk about it. And Dr. Felucci is going to talk about every aspect of that, including sexual health, safe sexual health, and all the parts that pertain to that as well. And so with no further ado, Let's welcome Dr. Toyin Falusi. <laughs> Hello, Doc. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. And thank you so much for submitting your guest blog. And thank you so much for agreeing to join me today. So what has your experience been like since releasing the blog? Oh my gosh, the feedback has been much more than I expected. So I I did a podcast a few uh, months ago, just kind of talking a little bit about menopause, but then yeah. I've following your work and the amazing work you do in the area of fertility and sexual health and you know education around COVID. And, and so that's how I found you on Instagram. I decided to follow you, went on your site, and I saw something you had put out for guest blogging. And I thought this is such an important topic because menopause is not something we like to talk about yeah. i find that with women when you finally are around somebody who says oh my gosh i'm having a hot flash or oh my gosh my libido is off or whatever it is then you feel comfortable and then you're yeah. talking in hushed tones and and yeah. it really was kind of like you said taking embracing what is about to happen mm-hmm. or what is going on yeah. because that is a natural part of our growing older I don't want to say the word aging, but that is a blessing, right? So sometimes it happens super early because of surgical menopause or, you know, things that happen with people getting chemotherapy or radiation. But if it happens as a natural part of your aging process, it's going to happen. And instead of talking about it in hushed tones or feeling embarrassed about it or the stigma around it, or it was really embracing something that is happening, that happens to all of us if we're fortunate enough to live to a certain age, I'm taking ownership for it and the feedback has been great. People have loved it. They've related to it. People have, yeah. you know, some people have sent me little funny stories about who those hot flashes. And exactly. People have said, mine has gone on forever. The Perry part is like, what is this Perry, Perry, Perry? Sure. But just try to bring some levity to something that is natural, something that is part of our aging process. And I think of it as the beginning of that next phase of life, right? And it's like, <laughs> frame it that way. And I'm so pleased that you framed it that way. I'm actually going to raise my seat here. I'm really pleased that you framed it that way because many people dread menopause as opposed to welcoming it as the next phase. And so you really eloquently framed it as a transition, but a welcome transition. And I think that's such an important conversation for us as Generation X to have, because I think for most of us who identify as Gen Xers, meaning those who were born pretty much the 70s and very early 80s, we like to think more of ourselves as still very young, our parents. We are are very much so. And, you know, part of us having symptoms that our parents and grandparents had is shocking and yet it's going to happen and although our parents and grandparents generation didn't talk about it that doesn't mean we need to keep it secret so 
without giving away the entire blog post, yes. can you highlight for us some of the the things that you talk about? Specifically, you know, you talk about the seven habits. What are the seven habits, and why did you come up with that title? Yes. So I mean, the seven habits of highly effective people is a book by Stephen Colby, which a lot of people have read in their work life, in their business yeah. world. It's about really work and you know personal relationships. But I love that book. I read it first, I think probably 15 years ago, and I read it again about 10 years ago and then five years ago. And when I was writing my book on divorce, I, I channeled those seven habits into how to be prepared for divorce process and co-parenting. And I did a blog on those seven habits on, on preparing to be an empty nester. Some of us are empty nesters, the seven habits, and you can apply that broadly. And they really fall into, um, um, that there are seven habits that fall into three categories. The first three are personal victories. These are things you work on internally. The next yeah. three are public victories that interface with others. And the final is this stage of renewal or sharpening the saw. And those first three are really, you know, be proactive. Yeah. The second one is begin with the end in mind. And the third one is uh, put first things first, right? All those things are private things you're working on, right? beginning with yeah. end in mind, being proactive. The next three are public victories. This is how you interface with the outside world, right? Thinking win-win, um, seeking first to understand, then be understood, and then synergy. Synergy is like what we're doing now, talking about menopause and sharing that information. And then the seventh habit is renewal. And I think we can apply those seven habits to pretty much anything, our work life, our personal relationships, how we approach issues. But specifically about menopause, I thought, you know what? This is something that's going to happen. It happens every day to thousands and hundreds of thousands of women get into that. And so the blog was really channeling that and saying, you know what, um, be, you know, being proactive. So we know menopause is going to happen. I'm not going to take away, you know, you do all this work with women. So, you know, the average is supposed to be about 52. I went earlier. My mom went earlier. So being proactive, knowing that it's going to happen, starting to research about it, which women, we do a fantastic job researching everything for our kids. Tutors, the best schools, the best this, the best tutors, the best, you know, but when it comes to ourselves, we're not necessarily that pro ourselves, like being proactive about it, thinking it's going to happen. What do I need to know about it? Am I going to consider hormonal therapy? Am I not going to do your research and being prepared for that process? The second one, really thinking about, you know, begin with the end in mind. It will end. It's going to be uncomfortable. It might be uncomfortable. Your libido may take a big hit. You know, there's vaginal dryness. There's sometimes yes. mental health, there's serious depression, anxiety. Sometimes it's just night sweats. There's horrible sure. drenching sweats. I would make rounds and in the middle of rounds at 8.30 in the morning, we walk into an isolation room with my mask on and I get out and I'm just drenching. And these guys on my team are like, what is wrong with us? Chicago, it's not even that, it's cold, you know? Yes. So, but it will end and there will come a time where you can drink coffee and have a glass of red wine without breaking into a sweat. So beginning with that end in mind frames it, right? And then just again, putting, you know, putting first things first. And this is where the first thing is you. Yes, many women go through menopause every single day, but this is about you, putting yourself first and really thinking about during that process, what do you need to make yourself comfortable? If you need extra, you know, thread sheets, if you yeah. need massages, if you need to start seeing a psychotherapist, whatever you need to embrace that part is putting yourself first and then thinking, while I'm doing this, putting myself first. What have I done with my mammogram? I'm up to date with my colon screening. Have I been checked for HIV? What am I doing about my sexual health? And so those are kind of those personal things that you're thinking about. And then the other part about, you know, really thinking win-win is that at the end of this, you know, guess what? You don't have to worry about getting pregnant if you don't want to. You can, and we still have to talk about, you know, safe sex and, and yeah. the, you know, things like that. But just, you don't have to invest in tampons or pads. There's just a lot of things. You don't have to travel and like, call the hotel concierge for like, you know. So thinking about there are things that are going to happen that are going to be win wins after that. And then just trying to understand what's going on. So I don't want to give away too much. I think it's an excellent plot. But then the part around synergy, 
that's where you know it's, it's one of those public things talking to people who've gone through the same process sharing paying it forward you know what did you do when you were considering hormonal therapy what helped yeah. what natural products helped uh, what things helped because some people talk about their memory things like that and then the renewal is channeling the things you learned during that process you can apply it to other things it's that next phase and thinking of ah now i'm going to write my book i'm going to publish yeah. i'm going to do guest blogging on dr cindy duke's side <laughs> so if you think about it because we don't give ourselves enough um you know credit for doing all this stuff and living to that age and this age is usually tough for women right where we're usually in our early 50s kind of stride our career we're usually in leadership or mid or management positions we're supervising people if we've been blessed with children we're raising kids our parents are older we're sandwiched in there and then all of a sudden there's all these things happening your hormones are going haywire but yeah. you don't have the luxury of the, of your of your teenager. When the teenagers are going through puberty, everybody expects them to be moody. They can slam their doors. They stay indoors. You have to go to work and be all True. these things. So yeah. it's okay. You know, you start growing hair in weird places. It's kind of like what's yeah. going on. Okay, hey, you know, um, I have to say, even though I'm in my forty, <laughs> early forties, <laughs> but the hair growing in places that you don't expect. Like, it, what? <laughs> oh, real. oh my gosh you know it's funny you bring that up because just <laughs> days ago i was on the phone with my mom and she's like what are you doing and i was like well i'm actually in the bathroom <laughs> squeezing out here as i was like whoever I know. my sister showed me the best way to do <laughs> <laughs> and you know but these are the things we we need to talk about we need to make light of but we also need to make sure that our peers our sisters out there hear this and know they're not weird they're not suddenly transforming or losing their femininity or I know. You know and because that's important because it forced me to have conversations with my daughters because initially it was the sweats and yeah. then, you know like all of a sudden i'm like turning the thing on the fan is on we're watching stuff together i'm like getting up i'm stripping they're like what is wrong with you and then they notice like mom every time you drink wine you get all sweaty and i'm yeah. taking off my wig and i'm just all weird yeah. so if us to have that conversation and True. we talked about it and they said oh and then one of my daughters said isn't it supposed to be at 50 i said you know what my mom went a little earlier and it, yeah. it forced us to talk about family history about <laughs> age at puberty and age at menopause so you know where your fertility lifespan span is our yeah. kids are high achieving kids a lot of young women your career career but if your family history shows that you have a really short fertility window we need to talk about these things and while you're talking about that you can't talk about menopause and sexual health without talking about safe sex practices without talking about prevention without talking about mammograms so these are things that conversations i have with my daughters my sisters and we talk about this because if you are blessed enough to live to 50 and then get to menopause it's that next phase of life that next phase and i think you know it's important that for those who are listening let's define menopause so menopause is defined as absence of period so no menses for 12 months back to back right we also look at a few other things like what are your fsh or follicle stimulating hormone levels to correlate that but really it's defined as the absence of periods for 12 consecutive months and so it's so important that we talk about that because so many people say it's impossible i cannot have menopause i'm too young but dr toyan brings up a very important <laughs> point which for some families there are genetic or inherited wiring or codes that lead to the women going into menopause at earlier ages some of them going to menopause before 40 four zero we call that early premature menopause so and that's another thing that's important to define because when people hear the word early menopause we're talking about people who've gone into menopause after age 40 but before the average age of 52 and then there is premature menopause which happens before age 40 and that one tends to have genetic reasons it may have autoimmune reasons or people with really bad 
Hashimoto's, people with type 1 diabetes. Um, these women may find that they go into menopause earlier, and that's in part because their underlying disease processes that negatively affect their egg count and lead to their eggs going away faster. Um, but it's so important to talk with your family. You know, I think. For me, I can definitely say I've experienced some of these perimenopausal states and symptoms, and it's helpful. I mean, I call my mom and I'm like, "Hey, did you have this?" You know, one day I called yeah. her and I said, "You know, you really downplayed your transition to menopause." I, and my mom was like, "What? Why do you sound angry at me?" And I said, "Well, <laughs> it's just that I don't understand why you never talked about this stuff. Why you never acted so like this big deal." Our generation, I think, we we are in that position now to to have these discussions. These discussions yes. with the next generation, if we have daughters or you know nieces or just the people around us, because that family history is so important of going early. So I didn't have premature menopause, but I had earlier than fifty two. Yeah. And when I talked to my mom about it, she said, yes, I went early too. She had five children, all that. But she said, I remember exactly when I she passed out. She was given a lecture. She's a university professor, but she got all hot and she passed out. And because she was still in her late forties, they assumed, oh my God, maybe she's pregnant again. And you know, that was it, it was, it was menopause. And I remember when I went to my doctor too, cause I'd had, you know, periods without, months with that and they were like oh you're so young you know you you can't but they said we'll just check your blood work and my fsh it was like wow you i said i told you but get the blood work to prove it and um and, and it was that but then it's important that we talk about ahead. that too because i think sometimes again i we always say and i like to emphasize women know their bodies best Yet sometimes yes. they go to their healthcare practitioner, whether it be a physician and other allied health professional, and they get poo pooed away, so to speak. It's dismissed, you know, like you going in saying, listen, I'm pretty sure I'm experiencing menopausal symptoms and them telling you you're too young, you know, right. without asking you about your family history and taking into account that there are genetics at play right. as well. That's a right. very good and so point. That's what and that's why I said, you know, you know, if you want to prove it, get blood work. Because I wanted to know what else I could try for hot flashes. And they tried this Bristol, something that was a mild antidepressant that helped with flashes. I had to give up, you know, as much coffee as I loved. Because that you start to see things that help you and don't help you. Certain triggers, red wine for me was like drenching sweats. Yes. I had to like... Um, I mean, I wouldn't be able to even wear my hair down. I had to have styles where, you know, anything, the heat would just, and it's always unpredictable, but being able right. to like make light of it, I said, well, this is that. But also I think the other color, the converse of that, when I talk about the blog about putting first things first is when you know your body, you know when something is off, and it's the, the we also don't want to assume that those symptoms are from menopause. We find out that yeah. women in that age group, women in their 50s, when I do HIV, that's what I've done for 25 yeah. years. There's a lot of new HIV infections that occur in women after the age of 50 for a variety yeah. of reasons. They're they've been divorced and now they're back out, the games change, <laughs> the streets are rough out there. Um they are widowed, they're in second marriages, they're out there dating, just exploring their sexuality, which is great. But you know, the messaging around um, PrEP and prevention and HIV testing and rapid HIV testing kind of miss them because maybe they were in committed relationships for so long. Right. And so we are seeing, especially among black women, a higher uh, rates of HIV infection after the age of 50. And because yeah. women feel like, well, I don't have to be on contraception anymore. I'm not going to get pregnant. But again, the risk of HIV, hepatitis C, hepatitis B, sexual transmission, infection so that time is also a time to really you know in terms of sexual health and screening but also knowing that you know night sweats uh you know i'm infectious disease i was thinking about tuberculosis i used to joke on rounds when i walk out of an iso room at the county hospital and your attending is drenched in sweats i'm like guys i don't have tuberculosis okay i'm just a woman of a certain age and you know a little id humor but there are other things like a night sweats. There are other um, hormonal imbalances, you know, thyroid right. stuff. There are just a lot of other things, right? So it's good to also get checked out to make sure, is this menopause? Is this menopause and something else? Or is this yeah. something else? And there are exactly. other things that could be going on, but you have to know yourself and mm -hmm. want to um, seek medical care for prevention, not until something goes wrong. 
to be Correct. able to know those things.